A portion of today's video is sponsored by Casetify. More about them at the end of this video. Stick around if you wanna see me drop my iPhone onto a hard surface from above my head. Hey humans, it's Hannah. Welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, I do videos on creepy and disturbing things. Today we're starting possibly a new series on my channel that I'm gonna call Infamous Internet. The first episode of this series is going to be Run the Gauntlet. Now, for those of you who have been around for a long time, really quick note, yes, I got a new audio setup. I upgraded quite a bit. Finally, after several years of doing this, I used the money I make from the business to invest in a much better audio system. That being said, I still have my lapel mic plugged into my camera as well because I am very not tech savvy yet and I haven't figured out all the audio interfaces and all that. So I'm gonna have both mics on for a few videos so that I have a backup just in case my Shure is not working properly or I don't set it up properly, okay? Let's get right into the video. This video was 1000% inspired by my Patreon Patreon Discord server. One of my Patreons, I don't remember how we got on the topic over there, but one of my Patreons over there was talking about how they hadn't played this game or they've done this internet challenge in quite some time and how they wanted to go back and redo it. Anyway, we started talking about these kind of videos for quite a while over there and it sent me down quite the rabbit hole and I got very inspired because I love nostalgia and I love disturbing things. So I really love those like old school internet viral challenges and things like that. I believe we touched on this briefly on the do not research iceberg. I believe it was in that iceberg, but I just want to make its own video about it. And we're going to go into the details about what this challenge is and what's in it. So if you guys end up liking this video, I'm going to make it into a series. You can let me know if you like it by simply liking the video. That helps out the channel a lot. Leave me a comment as well is of course always optional, but also really helps out the channel. And if it does well, I'll make it into a series, Infamous Internet, where we talk about creepy old internet legends and lore and challenges. So the phrase run the gauntlet or running the gauntlet is actually a phrase that preceded this internet challenge. Running the gauntlet was actually a form of real corporal punishment that has been used throughout centuries. The person who was deemed guilty or the person that needed to be quote unquote punished would be forced to run between two lines of soldiers. And the soldiers would be striking the person as they ran through this tunnel of people with sticks and other weapons. And the only way they could get out of it was by moving forward and going through the entire tunnel of people. This phrase can also be used now in the metaphorical sense. It can mean somebody overcoming some sort of public scrutiny or attack. So that's the origin of the phrase. Let's talk about Run the Gauntlet Internet Challenge. Run the Gauntlet is a website that contains this challenge where there are 20 videos in a certain order. The videos start off as beginner, and then after a few beginner level videos, it goes to the easy level videos, and then to medium, to hard, and then the very last deepest level, if you will, is called insane. So it's kind of even iceberg format. The reason it's a challenge is because all 20 of these videos are shock videos. And if you're not familiar with what a shock video is, although I'm sure most of you are, but Shock videos are essentially gore videos. Most of the time they're gore. Sometimes they involve just disgusting stuff that most of us do not get pleasure from watching. The object of the game is to watch all 20 videos in order without looking away. You can see how the challenge got its name from the original Run the Gauntlet phrase because it's about doing something very unpleasant and you cannot stop until you're done. The only way out of it is to move forward and finish it. Now, I haven't told you what the website is called yet because I wanna warn you before I name it. The website is very much not safe for work not safe for life, I would say. Without even opening the challenge, if you merely go to this website, the website is basically another kind of live leak website. It's filled with other shocking videos and news stories with videos that go along with it. The titles themselves, they're not graphic usually, but they're pretty disturbing. And then just due to the nature of the site, there's also a ton of ads on it. So I wanna make that very clear before anybody even thinks about going to this website, just know 
that that's what awaits you there. Consider your current environment before visiting. Obviously I don't and I can't recommend that anybody goes on this website. However, if you do and you're so inclined, now that you know what you're getting into, please just, I, all I ask is that you're at least 18 years old. I hope the vast majority of my audience is already over 18. That's who I'm aiming for, but please just be over 18 if you're even thinking about going on this website. It's it's a lot. So the website is called runthegauntlet.org. If you go to runthegauntlet.org and you click on the gauntlet tab at the top of the page, it will take you directly to level one of the challenge. Now it'll come with a warning that says you cannot skip to the next video without finishing the one you're on. You cannot pause a video in the challenge. It doesn't allow you to do that. In the midst of the challenge while you're on a video, you can click on the video to start it, but if you click on it again, it just starts the video over. There's no pausing or stopping until the video runs through. There is, of course, a stop button at the bottom for people that don't want to do it anymore, so there is a way to completely exit the challenge, or of course, you could just close your browser. It's not like it's holding you hostage there, but the point of it is to make it harder for you to just dip out and to, it, it basically encourages you to keep going by not having these pause buttons and no skip buttons. If you're willing to go to this website, there is also a cringe version of Run the Gauntlet that is safe for work. It's all just very ridiculous ridiculous videos that are just very, very cringe. The cringiest of the cringiest videos on the internet, but nothing inappropriate is on those videos. I've done some of that one too, and it is indeed cringy. For the gauntlet itself, I have made it through most of it. I will admit that I did go to a different screen at certain parts, or there's a couple of videos in there that I know I didn't wanna see, so I straight up just did not watch and turned my sound off. And yes, that's cheating, and I have no illusions that I've succeeded or won at running the gauntlet. I'm not pretending I do. I did it for research purposes only to make this video. So yes, I've seen most of the challenge, but no, I haven't won the challenge in the traditional sense. Regardless for this video, the whole point of this video is to go over the challenge itself and go into what each video entails. This video is perfect for those of you who are a little desensitized and are very curious, but don't actually want to see this stuff. You just want to know what's in it for your morbid curiosity sake. It's also good for people that are thinking about actually going to watch it to see if they can handle it and make a better educated decision on whether they actually want to go watch it. But I do want to be very, very clear here that the rest of this video might not be for you. Now, I apologize for all the disclaimers, but anytime I do a video like this, the disclaimers are very important. The rest of this video is not going to be graphic. Of course, I can't show anything like that on YouTube. There will be a couple still photos from the videos before anything happens, but I can't do that on all the videos because some of the videos are that bad, but I will be showing some stills from some of the videos where I can. There is also one video in the midst that involves animal cruelty. So I will not be going into any sort of detail on that one. You're on your own if you wanna know about that one. That being said, for some people, even knowing what happens in these videos can be very, very upsetting. I remember when I first heard about this kind of stuff, I could not get it out of my head for days and it was really, really upsetting to me. And I remember wishing that I had never heard it to begin with. I wasn't as desensitized back then, but I just want to stress that if shock videos aren't for you or you feel like you don't want to know the depraved things that humans are capable of and stuff, that's not a bad thing. There is no shame in not wanting to know this stuff. They're called shock videos for a reason. They're supposed to shock you. They're supposed to be upsetting. And yes, of course I care about my channel. I care about watch time, but not at the expense of anyone's mental health. The last thing I want is for somebody to regret watching one of my videos and being upset by absolutely anything that I have done directly or indirectly. So if that's you, if this isn't for you, there's no shame, thank you. And I will see you in my next video. Okay, thank you so much for bearing with me through those very important disclaimers. For those of you that are still here and are still ready, let's get 
into the actual videos. Beginner levels are first. These are fairly tame. The very first level of Run the Gauntlet shows two women arm wrestling. Here's a picture of them before anything happens. The woman on the right here, her arm is gonna straight up break in the video after they start the game. And you can hear the sound in the video. It's absolutely awful. And I hope someone took her to the damn hospital. I assume they did. She was surrounded by people that seemed to care about her. Level two is called Jackass Paper Cuts. It's a scene from Jackass the movie. Jackass was originally a TV series and then they made some movies out of it. If you're not familiar with it, Jackass is essentially, I believe mostly men. I will be honest, I haven't seen the movies. I have no desire to see them. It's not my thing, but it's mostly men being jackasses. I don't know how else to describe it. They're doing pranks, they're doing stunts, and most of them are very dangerous in nature or just very not socially acceptable. The video in Run the Gauntlet is a clip from the movie. It shows Johnny Knoxville receiving paper cuts by another man in the webs of his hands and feet. I hate stuff like this, like little cuts and things. Oh my god, it makes me lightheaded to think about stuff like this, which is weird because I'm not afraid of needles. I'm not afraid of gore and everything, but things like this, I don't know what it is, but I can't stand it. Level three and the last video in the beginners is Russian roulette knife cup test footage. This is a video of a man who screws up a magic trick. It's this video clip of a magician named Brian Bushwood who is practicing his knife cup roulette trick. The trick is spinning a table with the knife pointing face up, but there's styrofoam cups covering four spots on the table. So Brian spins the table very quickly, so it seems like he can't possibly know which cup has the knife. And then the end of the trick is he slams his hand down on the cups one by one, creating this tension as the audience believes he's about to slam his hand down on the knife. But the magic part is that he uses his psychic abilities to know where the knife is. The video in Run the Gauntlet is Brian failing the trick and accidentally picking the cup that has the knife underneath it. And he it looks like in the video he stabs himself through the hand. Turns out this video is fake and was staged. Brian actually has his own YouTube video about this particular viral video and says that he made this video for his friends at The Tonight Show. And I believe he goes on to perform this failed trick on The Tonight Show. It's a different magic trick. It's a magic trick in itself. He doesn't reveal how he knows which cup has a knife and which one doesn't. But he does explain that if you look very carefully in the video, you can see something taped to the back of his hand before he slams it down. And you can also see in the video that he's very careful to try to keep his hand this way so you can't see what's taped on the back of his hand throughout the video. He explains in the video that he actually just taped cardboard to look like a knife and then covered it in aluminum foil and then used a little ketchup around it to make it look like blood. The video is so grainy that you can't tell the difference. And sure enough, if you do look carefully, if you were to watch this video, you can see a flash of it on the back of his hand. So this whole thing was confirmed to be fake. Okay, we are moving on to the easy levels, which are just a little harder than the beginner levels. Level four, the first in the easy level, is called Japanese puke lesbians. It's a scene from a I mean, it's exactly what it sounds like. Vomit and other things are involved. There's not really a story behind it. I couldn't find anything about who the women are or if it was real or fake. But if Two Girls One Cup has taught us anything, it's knowing that we just shouldn't dig too hard at these things, you know, rule 34 and all that. Video five is a woman being stabbed. This is a video of a woman being repeatedly stabbed by a, what the video says is an ex lover and that he is uh, repeatedly stabbing her in broad daylight as bystanders watch in horror and they feebly try to help. I can't find anything about the background of this video. I have done every Google combination of keywords and the basic problem on verify, I mean, I do believe this is a real video, but I can't find if the woman was okay, et cetera, because unfortunately there's a ton of videos like this out there and there's a ton of news stories very similar to this out there. It's 
really, really messed up. However, I have seen this entire video and I can confirm that the woman gets up and walks away. At the end, she is conscious and definitely not well, but she is well enough to walk away. So I am going to go ahead and assume that she got medical care and survives. But like I said, can't confirm the country or exactly where this happened. The sixth video is actually not too bad in my opinion, especially because again, the guy survives in this one. So it's actually quite a relief. But level six shows the scene of a car accident. This man gets in a car accident and his car catches on fire and he's trapped inside. The video shows bystanders, I assume, but somebody kicking in the windshield for him and then he's able to crawl out of the vehicle and it saves his life. He is on fire, which is the most disturbing part, but you don't see that much of it. And the fire is quickly put out and he stands up again and he seems to be obviously, of course, not okay, but relatively so alive and conscious. Level seven was the last level in the easy levels. Not sure why this was in the easy levels, but it was actually deleted from Run the Gauntlet altogether. And I think we can all agree that that's okay with us. I'm not gonna go into the details here, but I'll just say that it involves a very, 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 very young child. I think they've removed any videos that involve kids there is one we're gonna talk about later that involves a 16 year old, but any like super young kids, I think they've deleted, which I think we can all, I mean, the ethics of gore videos circulating around the internet is a whole other discussion in itself. But I think we can all agree that at least kids not being involved in it is a good thing. All right, brace yourself. We're going on to the medium levels. Level eight shows a drowning, but Spoiler alert, it's fake. This video features an escape artist, magician, who's laying down in a bathtub under the water. They're, they're all tied up and everything and handcuffs and stuff, and they fail at the trick and end up drowning. Now, like I said, the odds of this video being real are very, very, very slim. I can't prove it 100%, but all the evidence is there. The person is wearing a mask, so their identity is hidden. So they're made to look like a woman, but we don't actually know the gender of this person. And second, just logically, a real magician would never in a fucking million years do a trick like this without an assistant or without help or a backup plan. There is no magician or escape artist in the world that would just do this without anybody around. That makes no sense. Additionally, there's no news reports, at least that I could find about this incident or this person. According to various Reddit threads about this video, it's from 2009 and it was circulating on websites, which, you know, is gross, you have to admit. I'm sorry, but I'm not okay with any fetish that involves harming somebody else or seeing harm done to somebody else. I think that's like crosses a line into needing help versus having preferences. But regardless, I think it's safe to say that this one is fake. Level nine. So this one actually does involve animals, but it's probably fine for most of you because it's something you would see on a nature documentary, honestly. It's not a human being being terrible, it's animals being animals, but it's a video of a snapping turtle and I'm uneducated. I didn't know that snapping turtles could be this vicious and hardcore. It's a grainy video of a this snapping turtle ripping up what looks like a rat. It makes me sad because I absolutely love rats, but nature is nature. Level 10, the 10th video in the series also involves an animal, a kitten, but again, it is not animal cruelty. This is a video of something very upsetting happening to the kitten. The kitten's in a vet office trying to get help and they're trying to help the cat. But the poor kitten is getting a very, very large bot fly removed from its eye sockets and they take it out and the poor thing, it's so sad. But again, like this kind of video doesn't bother me that much because the kitten doesn't look like it's in pain. It's not even meowing. Like I think they have the kitten pretty well sedated and they're trying to save the kitten's life. Like they're shocked in the video. They're like upset. So they're showing empathy for this little creature and everything. So yeah, definitely not something you wanna see, but definitely not the worst of the worst in my opinion. However, we take a 180 degree turn into very bad when we get to level 11. Video 
11 is the last video in the medium levels and it shows a man getting caught between a train platform and an oncoming train. This video, again, like all the videos are really bad quality from because they're from a long time ago, but it's terrible. It's so sad. There's this man in the video just watching it all happen. And it's, I, I don't judge his reaction because I'm sure it was so shocking. He didn't know what he was seeing, but he kind of just casually walks away. It's very odd. But all I can think about is like that poor fucking man. What a terrible way to go. I just, that's, yeah. All right. So now we're really getting into it. We're moving on to the hard levels. Video 12 is called Hot Iron. This is the video clip of a woman supposedly pressing a hot iron onto a man's piece as he sits there naked. And it seems like he's consenting to it all. Like he wants, they both want it, but still for the majority of us, it's very, very upsetting to watch. However, there's also a lot of theories about this video being totally fake. And I personally agree that it most likely is set up. At the very beginning of the video, you can see her like pump the iron and steam comes out of it to prove that it's on. But she does that like specifically to try to prove that it's on because then the camera cuts and it cuts completely to them again before she actually touches it to him and he screams, but there's no steam or any evidence that the iron is actually hot. So I would bet my money that they like had it on and she made it look like it was on, but then they cut the camera, turned it off, waited for it to cool down and then did this. They cut the video off before you see the aftermath. So I just have a feeling that this one is fake. Okay, video 13 is probably the first one that really, really got me. This is a diving accident. I wanna say up front that I got a lot of info for the background of this video from a man named Robert Lindsay. He has a blog where he wrote a very in-depth analysis about this video. I won't have it linked down below because the video is right up front on this blog post, but if you wanna look up Robert Lindsay's blogs, you can definitely easily find it on your own. This video is from 2009 in Lebanon. It shows a boy who is allegedly only 16 years old jumping off a ledge. It's a popular ledge to jump off into the water below. You know, as people do cliff diving, it's a very, very popular pastime. But quite unfortunately, predictably, he hits the slab of concrete below. He just doesn't jump quite far enough and he accidentally misses. You can hear lots of screaming in the video. Somebody swims up to him to try to help him right away. It's chaos, it's terrible. And then the video cuts to somebody in the hospital. You can see the aftermath. The boy's face is cut in half vertically and he's supposedly still alive. He does look alive in the video, he's moving and breathing. In Arabic, the doctor is saying in the video over and over, where do I begin? Like the doctors don't even know how to try to help this person. So we know that the actual diving video is not staged or fake. There are supposedly internet archives with it. I couldn't find them myself. None of the websites seem to exist anymore. I just wanna be upfront about that. But I do believe this was actually reported on real event. There was also other witnesses this is again all according to Robert Lindsay's blog. A lot of people try to debunk the hospital part of the video saying that you would never be allowed to film somebody in the hospital so it must be set up or just like a fake body but Robert Lindsay again makes a very good point that yeah in the U.S. and most other developed countries you definitely would not be able to do that. However, this is Lebanon, which is a developing country. The medical care in general is very different there and the rules are very different there. And it's likely that nobody would bat an eye at somebody filming something from their cell phone in a hospital. Either way, while we know that the actual dive happened and we are pretty sure that the hospital video is authentic, we do not know for 1000% sure that the boy in the diving video is the same person in the hospital. Very Sadly, the boy passed away two days later. Like I said, if you're very fascinated in this video, like I kind of was, go ahead and read Robert Lindsay's blog on it because he, I mean, again, somebody's blog is not some like 
official reliable source but his analysis of it and the details about it are very interesting but i warn you you know it's it's an upsetting page because he goes into graphic detail level 14 is an elderly woman shown in some sort of hopefully a hospital or some sort of medical setting her eye is extremely swollen and her eye is just swarming with white maggots somebody's trying to help her somebody's trying to remove them but I don't even think the person is wearing gloves. So again, I have to believe that this is in some developing country and she's just not getting the care that we would give somebody in the US or countries like it. But again, I, that poor woman, no one deserves stuff like that. It's so horrible. The last level in hard, we talked kind of about this in the Do Not Research Iceberg as well. This is a, definitely can't show any pictures of it because the video is of a man with a split pe Go watch the iceberg or go find that in the iceberg videos if you need to know what that is. And he is shown in the video putting a drill into the split part. He does not turn it on in the video which I'm surprised by because of the nature of this whole challenge. So it stops right before he does anything. But for anybody with a penis, this would be extremely cringy and I would imagine very, very disturbing to watch and think about. All right, the last section of Run the Gauntlet is the insane levels. Warning, I know I've given lots of warnings, but these are the very worst of the worst that humanity has to offer. Level 16, this is the first one in the insane levels. This is the one that I was talking about that involves an animal. It takes place in China. The video was put out by PETA, so that probably tells you plenty. Like I said, I'm not gonna go into details about that in the video. I don't like animal stuff like this. So if you really, really, really need to know, the internet is out there. It's very easy easy to find out. Level 17, video 17 is not violent actually at all, but it is very, very gross. So it might make you gag. This video shows a woman licking smegma. I can't, even the word is gross off of a man. So smegma, most people in the world develop this at some point. It's a very normal, not harmful, natural occurrence. It is the oil, uh, moisture, and skin cells that kind of like form into this white substance that you'll find on any human genitalia. Proper hygiene, of course, can reduce this, but you know, it's still not harmful. It's just kind of gross. Now, I also read yet again that this video is also set up. While it's just as gross to watch still, it is supposedly the person behind the camera put bits of toilet paper there to make it look like that in the folds of the man's you know what. So thank God for the poor girl in this video. However, in spite of the fact that this video is gross, it's way more disturbing because that poor girl in this video looks just, she looks unhappy to be there. And I just, I don't like that. All right, video 18, level 18 is one man, one jar. We also covered this fairly extensively in the do not research iceberg so again if you want my more detailed take you can go back on that video but I have seen this video in its entirely it's a classic internet shock piece most of you already know what this is it shows a Russian man who unbeknownst to his wife enjoys doing these kinds of things and videos in his spare time it shows him without clothes on and he sits on a jar and you know inevitably the jar breaks. The video is so, 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 so graphic and just very painful to even watch someone go through it. Again, I go over this in the Do Not Research Iceberg, but the man ends up, he's okay. He has spoken out since then and he says, no, my wife doesn't know about it, but he did admit that this particular incident was simply an accident. Okay, level 19 and level 20 are by far the worst ones. These are the ones that I definitely wish, you know, if I could go back in time and never know that this kind of stuff existed, I probably would have been okay. I probably would have survived just fine. So level 19 is a video. It's a video from the Mexican cartel and the victim of this video is the hostage. They're 
grilling him about various drug goings on, you know, as the Mexican cartel does. And like I said, in my opinion, any video like this, I know there's a lot of ISIS videos that go around the internet like this too. And I just, I wish they didn't exist. I don't think anybody in the world needs to see this kind of crap. I just, I don't, I don't know what good it does. In my personal opinion, it, I mean, it changes you. There's a version of you that doesn't know that this kind of stuff happens. And then there's the version of you after you know that this kind of stuff happens. And if this kind of stuff does not bother you in any such way, I think you need a break from the internet and from violence because I honest to God, personal opinion of course, but think that you're too desensitized. And I know I have gotten there too. And I needed to take in a break because I needed to remind myself of the severity of these things happening in the world. It's not anything we should be desensitized to. It should upset us. Okay, and level 20, finally, the very last most horrible video level is a longer video, of course, and this is three guys, one hammer. And just like the last video, I wish this video did not exist whatsoever. I mean, I wish it never happened, but I also wish if I had the power to wipe this video from the internet, I definitely would. Now, I made a whole video about this true crime story back in the day, back when I was a baby YouTuber. I think the video still exists, but uh, just a warning, if you go watch out of curiosity, it's a bad video, it's only 13 minutes long. I was a super new baby YouTuber, didn't know what I was doing, so it's not the best video. This video is from the true crime case out of Ukraine. It's often referred to as the Dniprof Etrosk maniacs. And in spite of the way this video is treated, the victim in the video, he did have a name. He was a person. His name was Sergei Yatzenko. He was a 48 year old man. Here is a photo of this poor man's wife, Ludmilia, who I must remind you, not only did she lose her husband, but a video of his death became a viral internet shock video. So there's that. Again, I'm trying, sorry, I don't mean to be like morally superior or anything because I'm definitely not. You could argue I'm contributing to this simply by watching them myself and I totally agree. The morbid curiosity for some of us definitely gets the better of us sometimes. So. Again, I'm not trying to say that you're some bad person if you've ever seen this video because I am not better than anybody. I'm not morally superior by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just saying that we need to think about why these videos get spread so far and wide and people use it as this shock challenge entertainment. We often forget that there's real people and families behind these videos. Anyway, the two monsters that did this, they wanted to be notorious killers. They killed 21 people. They would go around this area of Ukraine and torture and kill people and animals, and they would document it and film it. They were, I mean, the definition of evil. I mean, this is the worst type of person that exists. There's just no way around it. Garbage excuses for human beings. The acts themselves are horrendous, but the way they treat it is worse. They're often heard laughing and joking and just chatting in the videos as if they're cooking dinner or something and not doing something like this to someone. They take pictures of each other with their victims afterwards. Like they were very, very proud of everything that they did. I mean, it's one of the worst cases that exists. The video itself is of these two monsters trapping poor Sergei in the woods before filming his entire torture and murder, as the title suggests, with a hammer. The sounds in the video, you'll never forget. It's the most vile shit you'll ever see in your life. Again, this is one of those videos I don't recommend anybody go watch it because it's, I mean, it's, there's no going back after you've seen it. All right, as we close out this video, I'm gonna show you some videos of some puppies and kittens to give everybody a palate cleanser. I might even link some cute videos below if you wanna watch some videos of a puppy or something after, even after hearing this stuff and you need a little palate cleanser and something to uplift you and not feel like everybody in the world is uh, going to hell. One last note about Run the Gauntlet is that the videos in Run the Gauntlet have changed out 
over time. So there's a whole list of videos that have been deleted from Run the Gauntlet over the years, like the one that involved the child I told you about did. And there's a whole list of videos like that. You can find them on Screamer Wiki if you want to see the details of all of those. So if this list is not completely accurate to what the challenge is, that's why, because every now and then some of the videos get changed out. All right, if you did make it to the end and you did choose to stick through me with this video, I wanna thank you so much. We're gonna roll to the sponsorship and then I will be back to thank all the patrons. A portion of today's video is kindly sponsored by Casetify. Casetify is the world's most popular tech accessory brand known for their protective phone cases and global collaborations. Casetify sent me these beautiful impact cases. If you get a re-Casetify case, you get a case that is 65% recycled and also Casetify has recycled 51,000 cases so far. These impact cases can withstand up to 109 drops, which is four times the military standard. And with the new EcoShock impact absorption technology, the impact case can withstand drops from up to 8.2 feet, which I'm going to show you right now. I was super nervous for this as I drop my phone all the time and it's a very old phone. So the few cracks that you see on the front is before I dropped it with the case to five case. I promise those have been there for years with the glass screen cover, but I put the case to five case on to do the drop test. They absolutely came through for me. I dropped it from over my head and my phone was just fine. For those of you that want extreme protection, Casetify offers special bounce cases too. They are powered by EcoShock impact absorption technology that are six times military standards with a 21 foot drop protection. These cases have over 2000 designs and there are customization options as well. Casetify also partners with artists for their designs and they support lots of artist communities that are diverse and global. Go to casetify.com slash Hannah the Horrible today and get 15% off your order. Link will be right at the top of the description right under this video. Okay guys, please like the video and I will see you all in the next one. Shout out to all our patrons for their additional support. Our top tiers are Colin Holmes, The Deck of Cards, Michelle Valdovinos, Tom L, JJ, Little Kittle Cat, Mitchell Schaefer Meyer, Mike, Alice Paul, Brittany Phillips, Willow Winchester, Bambi, Momo Neon, Philip J, Marita 144, Sage K, Literally Lacey, Elderly Hipster, Reese Rolls, Leon James, The Puppy Hag, Rebecca Jackson, Headless Fancy, Toby, Carter, Kawakan Anime and Gaming Convention, Sonder, Sarah the Crazy Fish Lady, Blood for the Koi, Larkrar, Maxi, Ashley Danielle, and Give Grammy a Kiss.